listening to Hope at Night. Featuring Martin Doblemeyer. Joanne Davidson. Q&A with our live audience. And host, Anil Kanda. Today's episode, Sabbath, Ancient Ritual or Life-Changing Secret. And here's your host, Anil Kanda. What's up, Hope at Night? Hopefully not your stress levels. Unfortunately for the average American, between managing our personal and professional lives, making time to rest can seem almost impossible. Some of you may relate to Henry Kissinger who said, there cannot be a stressful crisis next week. My schedule is already full. <laughs> Today, 50 hour work weeks are no longer uncommon. And especially when many employees can now work from home, they can never truly turn off on evenings or weekends. Award-winning filmmaker Martin Dobelmeyer recently premiered his latest documentary film on PBS seeking to address this issue, entitled Sabbath. This film investigates whether the Sabbath is just an ancient practice or a relevant life-changing secret in today's modern world. We're going to roll that trailer right now. Six days you may labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Keep it separate. Uh, keep it set apart from the ordinary uh, rhythm of time. There's a good reason why you know, historians are saying that post-World War II, we entered the period called the Great Acceleration. It's that people now feel the pacing of their lives has accelerated to a point where they don't have time to care for themselves. They don't have time to care for family members. I think our culture right now is profoundly burned out. Two thirds of Americans say that they're working more than 40 hours any given week. We have to work more in order to sustain the same level of living. The labor movement in America is a surprisingly uh, religious story, and it does often converge at the issue of Sabbath. Shabbat is a revolutionary concept. It actually changed human history. Uh, for the first time, it introduced the concept of mandated rest. The very heart of the idea is a kind of workers' rights idea. Sabbath has ethical implications. Work should not be what defines us as human beings. It's a commandment. It comes from God. That's why we observe Shabbat as a Christian. I don't think we take the Sabbath seriously enough. If Sabbath rest was going to flourish and live in their lives, something else was going to have to die and I just never had an appreciation for the Sabbath day or understanding of it. All of that came to me recently, and I've been pastoring 34 years. A lot of what it translates into is, I wish I just had more time in which I just paused to breathe, to think about what it was that I was actually chasing after. We realize that time is our only non-renewable resource. Latino Catholics identify with the story of Exodus, the story of the Israelites wandering the desert. It's like the whole week is hectic, and then all of a sudden, you light the Shabbos candles, and you're in a different world. Sabbath isn't simply a pious teaching. It's not an add-on. What's at issue is the very meaning of life. Wow! Please give a warm welcome to Hope at Night, Dr. Martin Dobelmeyer. Martin, we're glad you're here. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Now, you've been making faith documentaries for over four decades, and the latest one focuses on the Sabbath. What exactly is the Sabbath? Well, well, the Sabbath really is the commandment from God to work six days and then take one day of rest. Not only rest for yourself, but the time to be commune with nature, uh, to be with your family, but it's actually a day to give back to God. What's been your reaction to the film so far? Well, the film, uh, it's, it's been great. I mean, I have to say, public, uh, all my films are for public television. So first of all, I have to make a film that's going to appeal to a wide audience. That's the number one thing that I have to think about. And religion's a hard sell for public television these days into the secular marketplace. Uh, but the reaction's been positive. I've been doing podcasts and interviews and trying everything I can. Now, the film will be on public television for the next several years. 
So PBS now is more like Netflix. So it does not a big rush when it first comes out. There's sort of a buildup as it goes, and we're seeing a nice buildup over the summer, so it's been great. So why did you think it was important to create this particular documentary? Well, the last film I did, before the Sabbath film, was a film about a great American Jewish writer whose name was Abraham Joshua Heschel. He wrote a wonderful book called The Sabbath, and I studied that book for that documentary film. And so here I am, you know, sitting at home during the pandemic and thinking, uh, you know, I remember that book clearly. I, I, it, it influenced me in my life. And I thought, you know, I had made films on Seventh-day Adventists and I knew how much Seventh-day Adventists had honored the Sabbath and how important it was in their lives and, and how all of that had been disrupted by the pandemic. Wow. And uh, you couldn't get together in community anymore. And Sabbath was given as a gift to community, to respond in community. So I thought, let's give it a try. <laughs> and so, fool that I am, I have to say, I would never recommend to anybody go out and make a documentary film during a pandemic. <laughs> that, 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 was, that was foolhardy to do it, but we were able to get it done. And I can just imagine all the challenges you must come across during that time. It was difficult. There were congregations that we contacted and places that we wanted to go, and they said, we thought we'd be open, but we're not. Wow. We, can't, we can't reopen yet. So uh, it, was, it was tender going for a while, but we were able to make the film, and I'm, I'm thrilled about that. Fantastic. If you don't mind me asking, what's your own faith tradition? And, and you're keeping the Sabbath. What benefits are you receiving from that? I was born and raised, educated Roman Catholic. Uh, but of course, because of my work over these last 40 years, I'm in various congregations and religious groupings all the time. And so uh, for me, this has been an opportunity to recalibrate how I think about my, the Sabbath myself. You know, if you're raised Roman Catholic, not going to church on Sunday is a sin, mortal sin. That's a serious load for an eight-year-old right, right. to be carrying around <laughs> if you, right, right, if you right. miss Sunday, Sunday Sabbath. But uh, for me, it's an opportunity to sort of rethink it. I mean, we, we've come through a period, especially in America now, where S Sabbath was mandatory. All the stores and shops, everything was closed down. There was, it was sort of hard rule. And I bet if you talk to a lot of uh, religious people, especially Adventists, they would talk to you oftentimes about the rules and regulations about Sabbath. And so what we were trying to say is, you know, a lot of these rules and regulations like blue laws, how many of us remember the blue laws right. going back, you know, a generation or two, all gone. Right. And now it's up to us that created a rhythm to our lives. And one of the things I saw that was happening during the pandemic is we lost any rhythm to our lives. Right, right. Uh, that's, that's really amazing. I mean, and, and what I'm hearing from you is, look, we need to restore this ancient practice because it's needed like never before. Well, I, that was the comment. You know, I go into public television, and I have to pitch every idea. And they say, well, what's the common denominator for every American? And I says, number one, we're all stressed out. Right. We're all feeling burned out. And so maybe there's an opportunity to talk about an ancient religious practice that's more needed now than ever. And they looked at each other and said, okay, let's, go, let's give it a try. So we're talking about a 24-hour day of rest from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. How does this impact your relationship with God and your relationship with others? I think, first of all, it gives you time to think. Right. And, and, and it formulates the rhythm of your week so you actually commit yourself to being with family and stopping. And, you know, you know the, big, the, big, the big deal for me is I've been thinking about this more and more. It's not so much about the exterior. Uh, what you do in terms of, you know, fulfilling rules and regulations, the places that you show up. But what's going on inside? Can you really let it go? Can you take that restlessness that you're feeling and really put it down for 24 hours? Mm. And maybe if you have to, if you like it, even go 36 hours, 48 hours, take a break. Because I think we're, we're all feeling it right now. And I think this is something that uh, is not just good for people who practice religion, but I think it's good for all of us because I think we all need to stop a little bit. So what I'm hearing is there needs to be an intentionality to rest. Yeah, and a regularity too. Wow. To do it on a regular basis. That's, I think, what the idea of Sabbath is also. Not just the stopping, but to saying, I'm going to do this every week. I can plan on this. I can count on this. You know, people all across the country who aren't religious are taking what they call a tech Sabbath. Right. So they're putting down the cell phones. They're putting away the laptops for a day, 24 hours. And what's really interesting for me to see is that when I tell people I'm doing that, they don't call. <laughs> they, don't, they know I'm not going to answer the phone. I'm not going to text them back. They just don't call. They just sort of stop for a little while. And so it becomes a residual benefit that it's not only good for me, but it's good for the people in my universe. So how does it impact the week following? 
you kept the Sabbath. How does it affect that new week? <laughs> Mondays are harder. <laughs> you know, getting back on track. It's Mondays little, are hard for everyone. Yeah, for apparently. everybody, it's a little hard to get going again. But we, but you know, you you just you just feel a sense of being rejuvenated, and you have a, a chance to be able to sort of get back in the game with a little a little bit more clarity than you ever had before. And I and I think that's I think coming out of the pandemic, I appreciated that because I, I think I lost a sense during the pandemic of what day it was, and all the, every day sort of felt the same and. I think we all felt that, and so I think me doing the film was was good for. I, th I think it's a good topic to, to reach out to, to try and communicate this kind of a storyline to the American people. It was really good for me too. Right, as you've shared this documentary, as others have watched it, and you've noticed the reactions from people who are religious, people who are church goer goers, uh, people who are not religious, maybe people who are atheists. What has been some of the things that have uh, come out from them regarding this idea of Sabbath? Mm -hmm. ha have they been benefited from it? You, you know, um, the people who would not identify as religious or the famous category now called nuns, Hey. People who are, you know, I'm religious, but I'm not, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. religious right. um, uh, they can also be very interested and concerned about the environment. Right. And one of the real strong emphasis in the, in the idea of Sabbath is the commitment to care for the earth. Right. The common earth that we all live on. And I think that's one of the things that comes out in the Sabbath. I mean, one of the, you know, a number of the stories, and, and Sabbath, the film, the two hours, is a collection of short stories. And a couple of the stories speak directly to the idea of care of the earth, that Sabbath is a call for us to care for the earth. Sabbath, I think, also is, it says, you know, not only shall you rest, but your family shall rest, your children shall rest, your slaves shall rest, the animals shall rest. I think that, I think the, the call to Sabbath was the first animal rights activist commandment right. to sort of stop and say, you know, your oxen, the beasts of burden, they deserve a day off too. So I think once we started to peel back the subject matter, it got richer and richer with every turn. And, and that's what I loved about the subject. I really love what you're saying because when you study out, um, you know, ancient uh, Middle Eastern documents regarding, um, you know, the, the rights of people, even animals um, and, and society mm -hmm. itself, it seems like the Sabbath commandment really stands out as something amazing mm -hmm. and, and something uh, on a, a whole nother level mm -hmm. in guarding the rights of people, in guarding our relationship, our time, mm -hmm. and even guarding the, the rights of animals. Yep, yeah. and, and if you take a, take a moment and use the lens of Sabbath to look at American history, I, I think it's an absolutely fabulous and a fascinating story because, I mean, the Puritans come to this country, they wanna sort of set up a new way of being and leave Europe, come over to this country. And one of the reasons why they wanted to come here is because they felt as though they couldn't practice Sabbath the way that they really believed, a whole, a full-bodied Sabbath that they wanted to, to practice. And then you look throughout the course of, of the American history story, there's a great story that I couldn't use in the film about how during the Civil War, both sides, North and South, decided we're not fighting on the Sabbath. We're not going to do that. We're not going to train. We're not going to drill. We're not going to fight. And then sure enough, uh, uh, because we're here in uh, the Washington, D.C. area, uh, the, the great battle of Manassas, the first battle of Bull Run, um, the Union Army attacks the Confederate Army on the Sabbath, and they lose. Oh, wow. And, and the whole country says, well, of course you're going to lose. You attacked on the Sabbath. That's not going to work. <laughs> and, and, and then you, you start to see into the 20th century, the, all the, the labor movement is connecting with the religious movements because they're saying, you know, you're talking about Sabbath. We're talking about the rights of workers. This is a natural alliance that we have here. And so there's all kinds of stories and chapters of Sabbath that, that opened up to us uh, once we began to sort of go deep, deeper and it just became more and more and more fascinating. So it took you about 12 months to make this film? Well, the average film takes about 12 months. This one took a little longer. This one took about maybe 18 months to make. Oh, and, wow. and we did have some problems because of, of, of the pandemic and everything. Things we were counting on didn't come through, but we, we got it done. It took about 18 months to make the film. 18 months to make this film. What did you learn throughout this whole process? You know, you know I, I think in some ways, Sabbath really is, especially for young people to, to look at this content. This is one of the most countercultural right. commandments that you could ever want to hear from. Uh, because the, everything in the American culture says you, you're a strong individual, you're on your own, you know, that lone, you know, that lone fighter against everything else. The Sabbath really says, you know, we're all in this together. The Sabbath commandment was given to us as community, and the response should be in community. So that's, you know, and, and Sabbath says, you know, everything in the culture says, work, 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 work until, until you drop. And the Sabbath says, no, I'll control my workspace 
and my rest space, my, my professional life mm -hmm. and my personal life. So everything, when you look at it about Sabbath, is as countercultural as you can make it. Wow, it seems that it really creates healthy boundaries for life, a balance for life. Yeah, and we lost a lot of that in those last generation, didn't we? Right. I mean, we, we worked, we, many of us worked, you know, 24-7. That phone is on all the time. We're always in contact. We live in an instant world. I mean, everything is instantaneous, and we, res, we, we expect that we're going to be able to connect to somebody immediately, and they're going to respond back. And I think in some ways, Sabbath says, no, there should be boundaries. We're better for it if we can have boundaries. Wow, wow. Today's modern culture, the hustle culture, Sure is work, 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 and and what people don't realize, it eventually leads to a burnout. It, it leads to a um, you know just running smack mm -hmm. into just when you're completely worn out. You don't got any more energy left. You're right. you're wiped out. You're you're tired. But the Sabbath teaches balance to life. Yeah, and, and I, you know, I think we all know that we need right. that. Right. <laughs> I think we do, except we feel as though the competition is so strong in this country. This is a tough country to practice Sabbath, and it is. And that's why I think it's so countercultural, but I think it's so necessary. Martin, I've really appreciated the conversation and the emphasis on rest and balance. That's needed like never before. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Well, it's time to go to a break, but coming up, we're going to find out more about the origins of the Sabbath from a professor and author who has taught and written about this topic. Don't go away. Welcome back to Hope at Night. In our earlier segment, we found out more about the concept of Sabbath with award-winning filmmaker Martin Dobelmeyer, whose latest documentary film on Sabbath recently aired on PBS. Now we'll get to find out more about the Sabbath with an incredible woman who is a wife, a mother, a musician, and a professor of systematic theology at the Andrews Theological Seminary and author of the book, Rediscovering the Glory of the Sabbath. Help me to welcome here at Hope at Night, Dr. Joanne Davidson. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, I'm delighted to be invited. Thank you. Professor, I've got to ask you a question. Here's my first question. What is the Sabbath according to you? It's a reminder that the God of heaven is so powerful, he even controls time. And he's not a tyrant. He says, I want you to rest a seventh of your life, but I'm going to give you the, the schedule to make you the most prosperous and the most re rewarded. This is really antithetical to a lot of the concepts of gods or gods that are out in the world. A, a God who is not tyrannical, a God who actually wants you to rest. There's no other God like it. You study all the ancient religions. None of them, none of the gods give a day of rest. None of them want fellowship with you. They want to command you and order you around. But the God of creation, the God of the Bible says, I have a blessing for you. You know, in fact, I think it's one of the great reasons that we think God is love because lovers like to set special times to be together. Right. And God is love and he says, I want to be with you on a special day, not just once a year, not just your birthday, not just a, 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 on a month, but every week to spare special time with That's you. That's right, continually, regularly, as we learned earlier. What is the origin of the Sabbath? Where does it come from? Where is it found? Okay, well, if you if take the testimony of Scripture, which I do, I'm a biblical Christian, you find that the Sabbath originates long before there's any Jews, long before there's even sin. It's when God sets up the whole uh, reality that we live in. And he, he, he even says, I can make matter. I can, I can even control time because, you know, the weekly cycle is not based on any celestial movement. Like the month is based on the cycle of the moon or the year is based on our, our free trip around the sun every year. But the weekly cycle is something that God set in place. And anthropologists are amazed that they find the weekly cycle everywhere and all continents, all history, that, that seven day week is there. Uh, it, it's just a remarkable thing of the power of God to share reality to give us a blessing. So let me follow up with this. When you think philosophically about the concept of God, you think about God, uh, there is no other being who is more active than God, who upholds the entire universe, existence itself, who is continually at work. There's so much activity. No one is more energetic than God, right? Right. 
why would he command a Sabbath? Well, there's a neat text in Psalm 133 when God sets up with the Jewish people a special way of life that separates them from all the other cultures. And at, at the end of the Psalm, it says, and there God commanded a blessing. Hmm. Now, most people don't like to think of commands as blessings. And we, you know, we don't like to talk about commands, but there we're reminded that God's commands are blessings. He never restricts you from anything good. And he, he shows his ability to take time itself and shape it to give us a blessing. See, God rested on the seventh day. The very, at Genesis 2, 1 to 3, it talks about the four verbs that God used to develop the Sabbath. He rest, blessed it, he rested, he, he sanctified it, and he, and, and, but God wasn't tired. So why did God rest? Well, the, the, the interesting thing, if you know something about the original language, is the rest of the satisfaction of a job well done. And remember, every day God creates you, so this is good, this is good, this is good. And then he comes to the sixth day and he makes humans and land animals and gives them their menu. And he says, this is very good. And then the seventh day, he enjoys what he made with the people that he made. And it's, it's, a, it's a gift of blessing. It's a blessing. Dr. Davidson, do you think the Sabbath is needed like never before in today's culture, today's society, today's world? Oh, I know from my own experience how much it is necessary. And so people think of the Sabbath as something they've got to do rather than something that God wants to give. And that's, that's, that makes a big difference when, some, when you realize that God wants to give you a blessing. You know, it's part of the law, but so is gravity. Right. You've got to obey gravity. It's the law. You can try to defy it and de deny it, but it, gravity is going to win. And God's laws are the same thing. They're, they're the shape of reality to give us the best resources of life and restore us. See, God also in the commandment said you've got to work. And so we think work is part of the burden of life. No, God intended work to be a blessing. That's part of the blessing too. And they said, but I've even got a greater blessing on the seventh day, an even greater blessing than you can imagine. And the great creator bends low to, to share his person and his, his love for us. He, uh, one writer says that God pours out his choicest blessings on the Sabbath. He's with us all week and he blesses us all week, but the Sabbath is the peak of relationship. Dr. Davidson, what if someone says to you, well, that's, a, that's an outdated practice. That's a, that's a Jewish practice. Is this even found in the New Testament? Oh, it's found in the, well, remember Jesus comes, right? And he says, uh, which is recorded in several of the Gospels, I'm Lord of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And so the great creator comes down and he said, this is my, on the, uh, in the Old Testament, he calls it my holy day. And in the New Testament, he says, it's I'm Lord of this day. And he, and it says in Luke, who's the only Gentile to write a book in the, in the Holy Bible, he writes that as Jesus' custom was, he would go to synagogue on the Sabbath. And, and he performed more miracles on the Sabbath to remind us that the Sabbath is a day for miracles. It's a day for miracles that God wants to restore us and renew us and bless us. And then you go to the book of Acts and dozens of times it mentions the, the apostles going to synagogue on the Sabbath. And I love the time when it says that, that Paul went to the synagogue and there were Jews and Gentiles worshiping together. And when Paul was done preaching, the, gen, the Gentiles said, come next Sabbath and teach us more. And so it's all the way through the, 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 um, the book of Acts when Paul and the apostles worship on the Sabbath. And Paul writes about the commandments in his letters. He writes to these different churches that he's established and he talks about the law and, and it shows by his, his own lifestyle that he keeps the Sabbath. And then the book of Revelation reminds us that the law of God is going to be a mark of those who, uh, keeping the law is going to be a mark of those who, who follow God fully. Because the law is not to be a burden or a straitjacket, it's a, it's a gift of showing us how to best live in this old dark world. That's right. So what I'm hearing from you is that uh, the, the law, the Ten Commandments operate like natural laws, that there are consequences when these things are broken. What do you think has been the consequence of a world that doesn't observe the Sabbath, at least the majority of the world that doesn't always observe the Sabbath? What do you think are the consequences that uh, we face in the world, in society? Well, it, it goes back further than that. I think as God, people have rejected God, they have un misunderstood what he was trying to do, and they and and, and they, their whole lives are are being torn apart with stress and disease and 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 conflict and where as if they'd come when Jesus I love Jesus says come unto me, all you that labor that means work and are heavy laden and I will give you rest mm. 
unto your souls, not just physical rest, but a, a whole person rest to your souls, and you can find peace there that you can't find any place else. Wow. You know, Martin shared some fascinating insights into the Sabbath and the environment. How does the Sabbath relate to social justice? Oh, he touched on that. Remember that the, the Sabbath, it, 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 God describes who's all included in the Sabbath rest, everybody, even the slaves. Mm -hmm. And God shows that he's no tyrant. I'm not going to make you work seven days a week. You take a day off and so do the slaves. And I like what Martin said about the land, the creation care. Uh, we were talking to a farmer a uh, few years ago who has, uh, uh, in another state, has thousands of acres. And he read in in God's commands to Israel as they took the promised land, you got to let the land even rest every seven years. The land even gets a sabbatical. And he said, how can I do that? So he said he divided his ranch into seven plots. And every year, one of those plots would rest. And so by the end of the seven years, his whole ranch would have rested. He said, you know what? I, my, I got a lot more harvest and letting the so soil rest too. I'm reading a book now called Dirt. That's the title of the book, Dirt. D-I-R-T. D -I -R -T. Okay. Yes, <laughs> and, he's, and he's showing the history of different nations, past history, when they would wear out the soil and then they would learn to let it rest hmm. and let it rejuvenate. So even the soil, God said, let me show you how to take care of that so you'll get the best benefit from it. Let me show you how to take care of your life so you get the greatest benefit and the most joy out of life. I'm not a tyrant. You're going to rest the seventh of your life. Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. It seems our world is worn out. It's worn out. It seems people are worn out. The environment seems to be reaping the, the consequences of being constantly worked. Uh, I mean, it's, it's really fascinating to see what's happening in our world. Today. It just seems like it's really craving a time of rest so it can be rejuvenated, restored, right? That's right. Wow. And uh, I, I've got to tell you that I've been a Sabbath keeper all my life, but I didn't always appreciate it. It's something I've got to do. This is something because it's God's word and this is what he said. I've got to do it. And I never really put it in his larger context of what God was giving me in the Sabbath. And then we had a chance to live in, in Israel for six months while my husband was studying Hebrew and we made some Jewish friends and they would invite it. They heard that we were Christians keeping Shabbat. So they said we must celebrate together. And we, we came to their homes different times and saw how they loved the Sabbath. It wasn't something they had to do. It was, they, they saw its joy and its glory and they, they had special festivities. The husband would bless his wife and the mm. wife would bless his, her husband and they bless the children have a special meal and light the candles and welcome the Sabbath. And I thought, welcome the Sabbath? That's something I got to do. And I finally learned that the Sabbath is a gift. It's a gift. Mm. And we can be blessed by accepting this great gift from the Creator. It, it seems that it really impacts someone's life vertically with God and then horizontally with other people. It, it seems that it releases this idea of control. We're all about control. Control is so important, you know, but it seems that the Sabbath defies control and says, let go. Let go. Let go for a day. Everybody. And it's interesting too that this, in the book of Genesis and the Sabbath commandment, it mentions both male and female. Talk about social justice. Right. God knew about that a long time ago. Male and female. In fact, both male and female are made in the image of God. In all the ancient religions, only the male was made in the image of God. So it's this wonderful equality that God accepts all of his kids and all of his creatures. He said, oh, this is very good. Let's enjoy it together. And remember, God gave the Sabbath before Adam and Eve even worked. I love to picture them on Friday. God creates them and brings the animals. And then God says, and now you, I'm going to give you this garden. I want you to take, tend and take care of it. But tomorrow we're going to rest. And I, I like to think that Adam and Eve said, well, we haven't even worked yet. And God said, well, that's the point. That's the point. You rest in my finished work before you go to work. You're not earning anything. You're not having to do anything. Let's just rest and celebrate my goodness and my great created world that I'm giving you. Relationship is what God's all about. First, right? Yes, yes. Uh, what would you say to someone who says, wait a minute, I've never kept the Sabbath before. Uh, this has even, even entered into my mind. <laughs> Where do I start? What would you say to someone like that? Well, I would s start by saying, I, uh, I'd like to tell you, first of all, what a blessing you'll receive as you get this. You're not doing this to earn God's favor. You're doing this because God has favor that he wants to give you. And um, 
I learned from our, our Jewish friends in Israel that they, they plan special meals. Who doesn't like to eat? They plan special meals. They, they do things together as a family and, and, or, or with families together and, and especially spend time in Torah reading about how Jesus loved people and wanted to help them, especially on the Sabbath, and tur turn your heart into this great 24 hours of divine blessing. Because see, when, when God makes something holy, He's not waving a magic wand. He's, he, he is talking about Him entering this time. God is, God is timeless, yes, but He can enter time. He can enter time. And, and remember when Moses was at the burning bush and God said, I'm here, Moses, take your shoes off. And so God can show us He's in time, and when He's there, we can relate to Him. And, Right, and the healing and the miracle restoration that we so desperately need. Martin, you've been listening. You, you did a documentary, 18 months to complete about the Sabbath. You've studied the topic out. Someone comes to you and they said, how should I start keeping the Sabbath? I've never kept it before. What would you say to someone like that? Well, the word that comes up a lot, and we haven't talked about this at all, the, the, use this word at all, is the word contentment. Uh, and, and I think uh, we have a line in the film that says, what does it mean that God rests on the, that seventh day? That he's content. Uh, that is not a word that we hear often in the American culture. We're always, there's always one more job to do, always one more dollar to make, one more thing to accomplish, one more goal to accomplish. And I think if you wanted to find a starting place for the, the notion of, of Sabbath, it begins with a willingness to say, you know, at some point I'm going to decide, at least for today, for this week, I'm content. Wow. And I think that becomes the, tr the beginning of the transformation that says, you know, enough is enough. I'll start again next week, but right now I feel content. That's fascinating. And I need the blessing that God wants to give. That's right. I need that blessing. We don't go into the Sabbath to earn God's favor. God's favor has been given to us. We go into the Sabbath to receive even more of the blessings that He has for us. The one who created life understands best how to manage life, right? That's right. right? Let me ask you a question. Say someone comes up to you and says, oh yeah, that's really great. I like the idea of the Sabbath. Um, I, I, I see it's in Scripture, but I keep a different day. Uh, I pick, uh, pick maybe Wednesday, I pick Sunday, I pick Thursday. Um, someone may say, wait a minute, the Lord's Day was changed. Uh, what would you say to someone like that? Depending on who I was talking to, what I would emphasize. But w what's interesting to me is that the, s the people try to argue that it's Jewish, and yet God gave the Sabbath before there are any Jews. God also wrote the Ten Commandments in stone. Nothing else that God has in the Bible that he, he, he had human writers write it, but not the Ten Commandments. He wrote it with his finger in stone, and then when Moses broke it, he said, bring me another stone and I'll, I'll write it again. God trusted the Ten Commandments to nobody. And the, seven, the fourth commandment on the seventh day is the longest commandment. God just couldn't stop talking about this day. And he said, this is the day, and he, he describes I'm the creator, and he goes on and on and on, and all the other commandments are very short, mostly, and but this one. And so... When God sets apart a time, it would be like me saying, well, my, I was born on Valentine's Day, but I think I'll celebrate my birthday in April. Right. Or my, my husband and I got married and we have a special day, but I think we'll celebrate our anniversary this time because it's uh, more handy. And that's fine, that's fine. But when God sets a date and he says, I wanna bless you specially on this day, I, I think it's, smart to come to Him for that blessing, because I know I need it. God doesn't just set up the time, He sets up the timing yes. of it, right? And if He's right about the time, He's going to be right about the timing of it too. And, I've, and, and He says to celebrate His great creation, and He doesn't wait a whole year for the birthday of the world. He says, I want to celebrate it every week. It's so special. It's so special. I want to celebrate every week, not wait a whole year. Well, someone... Uh, is hearing this, someone is watching this, and maybe someone is keeping the Sabbath, but it's, it's not a day of rest for them. It's a day of burdens. I mean, maybe they're stressed out. What advice would you give to them? Uh, something to do on the Sabbath, maybe something not to do. Any particular uh, encouragement you would give to someone like that? We'll start with you, Martin. 
Well, well, you know, I was going to say one of the things that became crystal clear in the making of the film, we're going from community to community, Jewish synagogues and to Christian churches, that um, we're, we're coming into a, a community expecting that this is the Sabbath, this is part of my ritual for rest. And, the, and that day is the least restful for the church organizers, for the church leadership. I mean, this is the most exhausting day of the work, abs uh, week, absolutely. So um, I spent quite a bit of time asking these pastors and rabbis and people, well, what do you do? And they all have said the same thing, which is that we have to ritualize our own day of rest. We have to be really resolute and committed because the temptation is that I'm gonna work really hard, provide the Sabbath moment for everybody else, and then I better take my Monday or my Tuesday, whatever day that it is, and be really serious about it. And they would talk about how difficult it was for them because everybody else was back to work and they would call them up and say, well, I need to have ta this taken care of or a family business, can you come over and take care of this? And so they had to make a particular commitment to say, I'm going to recognize my Sabbath. I have to really take my Sabbath and shut everything down for their own health, just for their own health and, and well-being. And I, I thought that was a really, really enlightening. And, and the other thing I was gonna to suggest too is that where do you hear a message in this current culture about love and care for your neighbor and recognition about the needs that your neighbor has, except from a pulpit somewhere on Sabbath. You don't hear it in the American media. That's the last thing you hear. And, and so I think they, in addition to caring, doing all the social services and everything, congregations on the Sabbath provide an opportunity to hear a message that you don't hear anyplace else in our culture. And let me just tell, well, I, I train, I, I work at a seminary training teachers and pa future pastors, and I tell them, you know, Sabbath is God's busiest day too. <laughs> and and God will give you strength. I, I believe you need to take time with your family, but remember God, God's going to use you as a channel to give blessing. And that, that's, that's rather than just saying, well, I've got to do this on Sabbath. It's God's going to use you to be a blessing to people. I, I'm really blown away by this beautiful presentation of the Sabbath. And it, it seems as we're, we're talking, discussing, the idea of Sabbath is about intentionality. The idea of the Sabbath is about boundaries. The idea of the Sabbath is about balance and relationship with God. Wow, that's fascinating. Thank you so much for sharing. Well, it's time to go to a break, but when we come back, we'll get to hear some questions from our live audience for our guest tonight. Don't go away. Welcome back to Hope at Night. We've been talking about Sabbath with filmmaker Martin Dobelmeyer and author Joanne Davidson. I'd like to turn to our live in-studio audience and see what questions they have for our guests. Let's do that. We've got a question right over there. Um, hi, first of all, this is wonderful. Um, secondly, uh, so what are some things that we can do on the Sabbath? Uh, what activities can we do aside from communing with God and communing with family? What else are we allowed to do? Ellen White in uh, Desire of Ages talked about Sabbath is the invitation from God to sort of reconnect with nature. And that God, it, it's an opportunity for us to sort of reconnect with the creator of nature. And so lots of people find opportunities on Sabbath to take walks and just an opportunity to sort of remember what the earth that we commonly share is all about and our obligation to it. So I, I, I don't think most of us get the opportunity to do that during the course of the week. That's just not part of our, our daily lives. And so I think the, no, the notion of creation and connecting with it and the environment, I think all that is really central to the notion of Sabbath. You know, it's fascinating. What you're talking about is the Sabbath and nature, and it's, it's about getting away from the artificial, the overstimulating. Mm -hmm. I can imagine the benefits to not just a person, but to their whole family as a result. And sometimes it's good to do, you know, reestablishing a connection with nature with family. Right. To do, it, to, to do it as a family. Right. And to get away from what we have created as, as the creation around us and, and get back to what is the natural world. Right. And, and to me, I just think it's, it, it is, like, like Joanne said, it's a gift. Dr. Davidson, what would you say? Well, I, I totally agree with you, Martin. And add to that all the wonderful books that are coming out now about animals and nature. Did you know that elephants have funerals? When a baby, when a, when a member of their family dies, they, uh, the family gathers around and puts twigs over them and they weep. There's, there's books out about the, how wonderful animals are and that Sabbath gives me a chance to read those and study it. And kids naturally love to be outside and learn about animals. I, I've read probably two dozen books this last year on 
animals and what they're finding out about animals. Mm -hmm. And that God created those. And it's neat on Sabbath to get some place where you see nothing man-made. I like that. And, and reestablish re your connection with nature because God, Jesus loved this place. God loves this place. And I think we would learn to take better care of it if we knew more about it. That's right. Nature is the second book of Revelation. There's things we can learn well, about no, God. No, but let's correct that. Nature is God's first book. The Bible came much later. Okay. Love that. That's awesome. We got a second question right over there. Hi. Nowadays, a lot of people work second jobs or over 50 hours a week in order to afford the cost of living. Is it okay to work on the Sabbath in order to basically survive? That's a great question. That's a great question. And I think that um, that needs to be worked out in each person's individual s situation. But I've, I've found that people who have adjusted their work so that they can take half Sabbath has been a blessing to them. And met today, and most employers are sympathetic to that. And when you realize how much you need it and how much it will be a blessing to you and to, to work that into your life is, is, is a blessing to you. Now, on the other hand, there are people who take care of sick people and firefighters and so forth. We had a, a house fire a few years ago and lost everything. And I remember the firefighters came out and used thousands of gallons of water. We saved the brick walls, but everything inside was ruined. And um, the, the firemen, one of the firemen was a Sabbath keeper. And yet he said to help people on Sabbath, that Jesus did a lot. Jesus did a lot. He healed people on Sabbath and took care of sick people and was to be a blessing. So I think some jobs are conducive to this. But above all, the Sabbath is providing a time for us to be close to the Creator. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. Not just finding rest, not just getting rid of stress, but having a relationship with the Creator. And let each person decide what will greatly, will most help me have this relationship with God, by helping people or separating from my work, but find a way to, to connect with Jesus in a more real way than you have time during the week. Right. And, and currently the laws of the land, they protect a 24 hour religious uh, time of observance. So the laws of the land protect that right now. But a situation where someone is like, I've got to work to provide. I think what we're hearing here is there is a faith element to trusting God that if you put your trust in God, there's a provision also uh, that, that God grants to his people. As they honor him, he honors them in this process. That's right, that's right. Fantastic, Martin. No, I'm just gonna say, I think what's changed in this culture, this particular generation, you know, see if you see it the same way. I think a lot of people have more control over their work schedules than ever before. A lot of people are entrepreneurial, they, they can decide when they want to work and how they want to work. They're working late at night. It can be, they can work 24 seven if you want to. A lot of people are working off their, at home, off their laptops, and they can, they can work whenever they want. And so that becomes tempting because there's always this equation between how much you work and how much money you make. So you want to stay up all day long, keep working, keep working, keep working. Or do you actually have the self-discipline to say, look, this is enough, I'm content, this is the end of the week. This time belongs to somebody else besides me, right, my right. family, my God my world. Especially and, especially with the cell phone where you can do your work, you can do your, everything through your cell phone, check your emails. I mean, it's just always on. It's always accessible. It, 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 you've got to put that thing down on Sabbath mm -hmm, sometimes, sure. right? Yeah. And I was just going to say to Joanne, I'm so sorry about what happened to you. I can't imagine the devastation of losing your home. But thank God somebody came out on, on that right. day. And, right. and to all the first responders that are out there, that their the responsibility is to show up and do that job. I'm incredibly grateful. And, and it's just like all of us, we have to figure out a way to sort of take this practice that's been given to us, this commandment that's been given to us, and yet still live in the world that we are, we're, we're given to live in. And the more we, we wrestle with that, but it's really about finding that space where you can actually feel content with the world you have right. and do your job and give your time back as in proportion to what God has given you. Right, excellent. Let's go to our third question right over there. Does the tradition of how Christians observe the Sabbath change from the Old Testament to the New Testament? When we look at the New Testament, if, you, if the Sabbath changed, there's no evidence of that in the New Testament. And the, my favorite place to study that is in the book of Luke. Remember I mentioned earlier, Luke is the only Gentile to write a book in the Bible. And the weekend Jesus died. And Luke 23, it talks about Jesus dying on the cross and then the disciples taking his body down from the cross and bearing it. And it said, and that day was the preparation day and they went home to keep the Sabbath. 
So they knew that that was the the, the, the Sabbath. And then it says on the Jesus rested in the tomb on the Sabbath, just like he did creation week. Creation week finished, he rested. When he finished the gift of salvation, he rested on the Sabbath. And then in Luke 24, it says, and on the first day of the week, Jesus rose from the dead. And so this Gentile saw this sequence of the day of preparation, the day of the Sabbath, and the day of uh, uh, Sunday was the resurrection. And I know a lot of Christians honor Jesus' resurrection by resting on the first day of the week. But the disciples who Luke, as a Gentile, wrote about, knew that the Sabbath was the seventh day, and they rested, and then Jesus rose on the on the first day. And it's, it's a beautiful sequence that then the disciples all through the book of Acts still kept the seventh day. And slowly it changed to, to honor Jesus' resurrection on, on Sunday. And that's a noble task, but God's command still stands. It says, the seventh day is my Sabbath. And I, I know that God is not standing there ready to kill people for, for not seeing that. But I think that the Bible's clear about which day God blessed and rested and set apart and made holy. You know, it's interesting, even in death, Jesus honored the Sabbath That's day. That's right. That he precious? didn't break the law. I mean, even in death, he, he rested, rested on the Sabbath he, day. He finished creation and he rested on the seventh day. He finished his great act of salvation and he rested on the seventh day. It's a beautiful sequence. Right, fantastic. We got another question right over there. Um, yes, with all this talk about the Sabbath and resting on the seventh day, I'm still a little confused about which day is the Sabbath, Saturday or Sunday? Right, so what day is the Sabbath according to the Bible, according to Scripture? The Bible is consistent that the Sabbath is the seventh day. In fact, some people try to say, well, um, on, on the creation week, every day God said, this is good, this is good, this is good, but not on the seventh day. But there's more verbs connected with the seventh day than any of the other days of the week. And God set it apart and he made it holy. And how does God make something holy? With his presence. It's not waving a magic wand. He enters time and his, his very presence just gives, it, gives out a blessing. And so I, I, I see that as, as being eternal, that it was given before there were any Jews and they found it around the world, the, Ethiop the ancient Ethiopians, the, even the ancient Chinese records and, and, and Buddhist records. They were, in fact, the Buddhists had a council a long time ago, which day is the Sabbath? And they studied the, the, the ancient writings to determine which day was the Sabbath. So I think the Bible is clear, but I don't condemn people for understanding it differently. I just want them to understand the, the what the Bible teaches, and then they can make their own choice. But I, I want to worship on the day that Jesus set apart because he promises special blessings that day. And that's what Sabbath is all about, is being with Jesus, the great creator, the great savior. Martin, in, in your study and investigation of the Sabbath, what did you learn from ancient history and Constantine regarding the Sabbath, the change of the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. Well, this is, uh, without making it a history lesson, this is the big transformation that happens in that, you know, the, the fourth and f fourth century, really, when Constantine sort of breaks away from the Roman Empire. And he sets in motion the, the notion that we will honor now the, the Sunday Sabbath, uh, parallel to the sun god, the Roman worshiping of the sun god. And, and so there was intentionality to the idea that we're going to separate ourselves from the traditional Jewish practices, and we're going to be a different tradition. We're going to be a different faith. And we're going to set this up to be a, a Sunday worship day. And that's now going back 17, 1800 years. And so I think there's this long tradition of what day, and there's been arguments about that. But I think it's what Joanne is saying that uh, I think you have to come to your own conscience and f follow your own conscience, follow the Bible. For me, I think the Sabbath is the binding notion, the idea that we stop for one day and honor the Creator and recognize what God has given to us as a gift and see it not as legal, but as, as a gift for the heart and soul. Martin, what you're honing on, which is really beautiful, is the concept of Sabbath, that we need to guard that Sabbath. We need to, uh, we need to place boundaries upon that and the dynamics of the very Sabbath itself bless us ultimately in the end. And Dr. Davidson, what you're pointing out is, hey, look, the Sabbath in Scripture, not just the time, but the timing itself, there's something special to that. Uh, you see that in the Old Testament. You obviously see in the New Testament. And so 
I think it's really important as every individual studying out this topic to be convinced, to be convicted, and Amen. to follow their conscience mm -hmm. on what they feel is right and true and, and best for them, right? And, and a good answer, too, is that the Sabbath was given before there were any Jews. The Sabbath was given to the first human beings. So it's not a Jewish Sabbath. It's the biblical Sabbath. And it's no Sabbath is no more Jewish than marriage. Both of those were given the first week. And so... It, uh, to be to to see that as Jesus was Jewish, but he kept the Sabbath. But the Gentiles, Paul was criticized. The Apostle Paul was criticized for not demanding circumcision, but he was never criticized for breaking the Sabbath. And so he saw that wonderful tradition of the Sabbath even in the New Testament. Right. You know, it's really interesting when you look at Christianity in Africa. Um, you know, uh, when Catholic missionaries got there. They, you know, they expected to find various kinds of, you know, African religion and religions. And they were quite shocked when they found Ethiopian Christians, Christians that had been observing, you know, the, the things of Scripture, including the Seventh Day Sabbath. This is a group of people that were untouched for hundreds of years. And so Christianity in Africa does not trace its roots to Catholicism. It actually traces it to the disciples in the old, in the New Testament, that's right, that's which is really remarkable because I think what you have here is essentially a, a case study on a, a group of people that were were following essentially Bible religion, and uh, I think it, it really communicates to us sort of the, the permeance of of the Sabbath and the beauty of the Sabbath and why it's important regardless of whatever culture you're in. And to put with that, the weekly cycle is found everywhere in every right. culture. The seven-day week is a remarkable thing. The great creator is in control of time, and he set it up to bless especially every seven days. Right. Excellent. Do we have another question? Right over there. So if you find yourself in a profession where it's deemed necessary to work 24-7, like doctors, nurses, um, police officers, firemen, how do they best celebrate the Sabbath? I was just going to say, first of all, thank you for the service that you provide. I think that's the most important thing to say. You know, don't be afraid. In, in the country that we live in now, don't be afraid to tell your boss, you know, I prefer to practice this particular Sabbath. And the laws now are tending to shift again to respect that. There have been different times in American history where they didn't. Uh, but I think the laws today are beginning to realize that a good worker is in demand. And then you can set some of the parameters. So if you, you really believe that this is my Sabbath, I want to practice my Sabbath on this particular day, tell your boss. Uh, my guess is you'll get a lot of sympathy for that. That's right. Let me tell you one experience with a dentist that we know. Uh, when he started up his practice, he, he told his patients on the Seventh Day Adventist, I'm going to close my, my practice on Saturday, but if you have an emergency, I'll take care of it. And so they started coming in with just minor emergencies and saying, but because he said, I won't, and I won't charge you on, the, on my Sabbath. And so they started coming in and he figured out what they were doing. So I said, you know, this isn't such a serious thing. Come in Monday when my staff is here and I can do a better job. <laughs> but, but doctors and dentists have to work this all out and nurses too. And uh, there's different ways of doing it. But the idea is keeping wanting, wanting to be with the great creator and the great savior and setting apart a time to renew a relationship and be restored through him. Right. I mean, the Sabbath is about life. Yes. It's about life. It's about um, restoration. It would be antithetical to the Sabbath commandment that when it has to do with human survival, you, you avoid that. Mm -hmm. You move away from that. That would be antithetical to the very idea of Sabbath, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. By all means, to any firefighter or nurse or doctor that has to work on Sabbath, the Lord is with them mm -hmm. and sure. blesses them in all. The, they are honoring the Sabbath by helping humanity That's on those right. days. Yeah. Wow. Sabbath is a rhythm of the heart. Right. It, it really is. It's, it's finding a rhythm for the heart. Amen. And I think the heart gravitates us to each other to honor the creator of this world and the world around us. So, I mean, if you, if you have to go and save people's lives on what you believe is the Sabbath, I, I think you, please do it. <laughs> please go do it. But you, again, I think, you know, see if you can present your argument to your employer, because my guess is in the world that we live in today, your employer will see the wisdom in that. That's right. You know, it's, it's beautiful what we've been discussing, the concept of the Sabbath, the idea of rest, mm -hmm. the idea of restoration, uh, the balance of life, our vertical relationship with God, our horizontal relationship Amen. with others. This has been a fascinating discussion as we've really explored the Sabbath, 
and and now there's a documentary out on Sabbath that we can watch. It's on PBS. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Davidson, you've written a book on the Sabbath. What was the name of that book? Rediscovering the Glory of the Sabbath. Oh, beautiful. Well, I'm excited. I think God knew that us humans would have the tendency to get so wrapped up in life, money making, pursuing pleasure, chasing dreams, that we were in danger of forgetting the one who made it all possible. In his wisdom, he created a temple made of time to remind us of our creation and to remind us of his provision, both materially and spiritually. For one day out of every seven, his people could pause in their daily pursuits and focus on God, their family, and their fellow humankind. If you've never taken the plunge to observe the Sabbath, I want to encourage you this next Sabbath to consciously take the time to unplug from the world and plug into God. And if you've kept the Sabbath out of pure ritual, why not take a moment this next Sabbath to keep it not just outwardly, but also inwardly, pausing to remember the God who created you and has the power to recreate you. Well, we're at the end of our show today, but please follow us on Facebook at Hope at Night and send in your comments and questions to us there. And be sure to join us next week for another episode of Hope at Night. Hope at Night.